Chairman of APLOS, to our guest speaker tonight as we welcome him to the stage to minister to us, sir. You're welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. We're happy to be together tonight. And the Lord is going to bless every one of you in Jesus' name. It's going to be a great time. Turn to, to the person right beside you and say, I'm just going to enjoy myself tonight. I'm going to have a great time with the Lord. And for those of you who are connected with us in all the campuses, something good is happening here. And I believe that something good is happening to you as well. And we're going to have a great night today in Jesus' name. We'll do quite a lot of things. I will talk, I will read, I will preach, I will summonize, I will talk to you, and I will challenge you. And I'm going to also make you talk back to me. And then at the end, we're going to pray together. There is a God in heaven who answers prayer. And I say, God in heaven who loves you and who wants to roll away all the problems you have in your life. We just listen to these wonderful talks and challenges. And maybe you're wondering, all those things they're saying, I understand. But I don't have the power to do them. The power will get to you tonight. <laughs> Something good is coming your way. Can you raise up your hands and just show me that something good is coming. Praise the Lord. We'll pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we well, thank you at this time. We know that you're a good God, a mighty God, and you love every young person here and every adult here. And we know you are going to bless everyone. We're praying, oh Lord, your blessings will overflow in every life tonight in Jesus' name. Be glorified, oh Lord, and strengthen your children here. That we will be the kind of people we ought to be. We'll never remain the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said a good amen. amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Now we're looking at a message. I told you we're going to have a sermon. We're going to have a talk. And we're going to have some kind of challenge. And look at the topic we have tonight, lost through lost. Lost through lost. I know you don't expect me to spell the words for you, but I'm going to do it anyway. Lost. L-O-S-T. When you lose something, that thing has been lost. But when there is a desire within you, and you have this passion within you, and you're looking for this thing, and you want to reach after this thing, and whether we give you or not, you want to have it by all means. And you're looking for every way to get this thing that is not given to you. We we'll say you have lost. L-U-S-T. Now, People get lost, we lose them, and you lose them because of the loss they have. To be lost is a terrible experience. Sometimes we hear stories of a lost child. A child has been kidnapped by people of the underworld. And it's a great concern with the parents, with the relatives, and with the neighbors. A missing child or a missing husband, or a missing wife, creates a great concern and fear because we do not know what the kidnappers have done with the kidnapped, abducted person. And there is sorrow in the family. And there is panic. There is sleeplessness. There is loss of appetite for the lost himself. That is in a way we cannot reach him. And he cannot reach us. There is danger. There is hunger. There is loneliness. There is sickness. 
where he is far away, lost, and we cannot reach him, he cannot reach us, there is oppression and maybe affliction and probably the approaching death that is not natural but violent. Each passing moment will be a moment of suspense because this lost person, wherever he is, does not know what could happen to him any time. And we have often lost things ourselves. Have you ever lost a bunch of keys? And then your whole life is disorganized because you've lost a bunch of keys. You brought your certificate to the campus here. And then the very week they want to check up on the certificates. You look for where you put the certificates. Lo and behold, you couldn't find them. And you look here and look here and look there. And you know that your very future depends on getting these certificates out and showing them that you are a legitimate student. And lo and behold, you cannot find the certificates. Lost. How empty your life becomes. How confused you become. If, now, if a key lost and a certificate that is lost gives you such a great concern, how about it is not the certificate that is lost, it's the owner of the certificate that is lost. Look at it. Certificate is there and the person that owns the certificate is lost himself. The key is there, but the owner of the key himself is lost. What a situation that is. There is a story in the Bible of the prodigal son. And I might be talking to you tonight, the prodigal daughter as well. This prodigal son or the prodigal daughter, drawn away from security to insecurity. From prosperity to poverty from the safety and the protection of the family to the danger of a strange land. And he was drawn away, lost because of lost. Through his own lost, his own inordinate desires, he was lost. But thank God, he was found again. And that's the beauty of it tonight. If you have been lost, tonight it is great night. I come to tell you that no matter how lost you have been, and how far away you are, in that place of insecurity, Christ tonight will find you out. And everything that has gone wrong, when you became lost, the Lord is going to rejuvenate you, recreate you, refashion you, and reform you and transform you give me another adjective it's good the lord is going to turn everything around i said the lord is going to turn everything around yeah. you know when i talk i always like to you know break my topic to this this and this because you know you always want to know what is given and then, what is the question? What axioms and definitions am I using to reach my conclusion? And then I finish with a QED. That means finished. So, that's why I divide my message. I divide it to three parts. Number one, loose living with lost. Loose living with lost. Number two, loss. L O double S, loss through lost. And then number three, life for the lost. Life for the lost. Number one, loose living with loss. Young people often equate loose living with liberty. You know, they look at some of us, uh, they say, these people, they're so narrow-minded and with their two eyes they can look into the keyhole like this that's how they describe it. they're so narrow-minded and so straight jacket 
that the way they talk and the way they view life, there is no liberty and there is no, there is no freedom at all. Let me talk to you. Some things we call liberty or some things we call freedom actually is loose living. Lost and destructive habits are often mistaken for liberty or freedom. And our different perspectives, when I say our different perspectives, you stand there, I stand here, and we're looking at the same thing from different angles. Sometimes we allow our different perspectives and our different definitions to cause much conflict between us. I'm different from who you are because of the way I reason, because of what I know, because of the many people I have counseled, because of the many places I've gone to, because I've seen lives destroyed. And because you do not have the experience I have, you have not seen the people I've seen, and you have not dealt with the problems I've dealt with, and you have not known the consequence of the liberty and the freedom you think you are enjoying because of your lack of experience. Me, because I have the experience, we look at things from different angles, and then there is difference between us. You think that we, who are thoughtful adults, we do not understand the independent youth. And we allow your independence and my thoughtfulness to knock our heads together. And we always disagree. And it's like we're in conflict together because we reason from different angles. I come to you tonight to appeal to you. Let there be no conflict between the youthful exuberance and the adult experience. Let's marry everything together. Have the liberty you want to have, but don't allow that liberty to destroy your life. Have the freedom, all the freedom that a youth, a young person needs. But do not allow that freedom to destroy the future for you. Do not allow the pleasure of today to cost you a future lifelong pain in your life. That's all we're saying. Liberty by all means. Freedom by all means. But do not allow the liberty and the freedom of the present day to destroy the pleasure of the future. Now. That's the reason why we're looking at these passages in the Bible in Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. If you don't have a Bible, just listen to me. I'll read it to you. In Romans chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 21. Because that when the new God, that means they knew about the existence of God, the new God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful. They became vain in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened. If you know anything about the active mind of the young, we're able to imagine. And we're able to daydream. And we're able to paint some pictures. And we're thinking of this and thinking of that. And we can stay like this and just be looking. And the adults looking at us will not know that actually we're seeing pictures. Although there is no film and there is no cinema before us. But we're seeing pictures. We're daydreaming. And we're thinking. And we're imagining. And we're putting the things together. And we see ourselves already in that other place. And we see ourselves in the car already. And we're already moving there. And we already see ourselves opening the door. And we see ourselves and we rehearse. We're not talking. We're not even telling you anything. But we're already rehearsing when I see her. This is the way I'm going to talk. And when I talk like that, she may reply like this. This is where I'm going to, you know, counter what she's saying. And then I'm going to talk about this. And if it brings any other theory about this and that, I'm going to talk like this. And we look quiet, but we have imagination. And those imaginations will lead us into some other things. This is how lust develops in the mind. And when the lust develops like that, we want to put some handle to the theoretical thing we're thinking about. We want to put some touchable, tangible, 
visible thing that you can feel to what we're thinking about. That's how the other things come in. And here it says, because of the imagination of the heart, the lust begins. The evil desire begins. And the daydreaming is there. It tells us in verse 24, where for God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves the Lord watches actually when the first thought comes to you and the first ideas come to you the warning of the Lord will say no and you neglect that and act as if you didn't hear anything in your conscience and then the Spirit of God will say no but it's softer it's lower then you keep on saying what you want to say, doing what you want to do, thinking what you want to think, and viewing or visualizing the video you want to watch, or the VCD you want to look at, or the internet you want to browse, you go on. And then the Spirit of says, no, it's softer now. And then you brush it aside and go on your way. Eventually, it says, no. Eventually, eventually, silence and god gave them up you want to ruin your life i said no you didn't listen go ahead you want to die go ahead you want your education to be a waste all that you have put into life and everything that is before you and the good life ahead of you you want to make everything a waste and I shouted, and I said, no, you didn't listen. 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 Go ahead. You want to die? Raise up your hand. You want to die? You will not die. You will live in Jesus' name. But you see, these people, eventually, God gave them up. And then in verse 26, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. When you think about that, vile affections, and they call it love. They call it affection. They say, I'm just fond of you. And they call it many, many names, Aristos. Just having a nice time. And many, many things that they say, but it is vile affection. And this vile affection, getting hold of your life, is taking root already. And then it says you get to the point where the lust becomes so strong that God says there is no remedy. He gave them up. Even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burnt in their lust. You understand? Burnt in their lust. You get to the position where the lust is so strong. And the fire and the flame of lust is so intense that... You cannot hear the blowing of the horn of the car that is coming behind you. Until somebody comes and pushes you out of the way. You want to die? If you want to die, not in front of my car. The man, the girl, the lady is gone. Because she's been thinking. Because of the vile affection. She cannot pay attention. You are in the class like this, and we're writing on the board. Everything the lecturer says, you are not hearing a single word. You are thinking of how to compose that letter. My sweetheart, that's not enough. It's too common. Everybody says that. My love, says, this is a simple, it's a common word. What word do I use now? Okay, you leave that part. I have been thinking about, lecture is going on. And the note is being written on the board. And we're being told that we're going to have a test um, on Thursday from 1 to 2. 
and you didn't hear any information at all, although you were there, because your mind is totally gone. Is that what you call liberty and freedom? Your life is being ruined. You are not yourself anymore. Lost is controlling your life. But the Lord will deliver you today. Because it says here that they have now received in themselves the recompense of their error, which was meet. Look at verse 28 again. As you look at it, 24, 26, 28, it really frightens you that God will give up a boy, a girl, a man, a woman. It says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. That's where lost or lead you. That's where evil affection will lead you. That's where all those things will lead you. But we're going to be free. I said we're going to be free. Again, I want to remind you that as I came here today, I come here to join hands with you. That this monster that is destroying our lives and destroying our community and destroying our campuses, we're going to join hands together as partners in progress. And we're going to destroy this monster. I said we're going to destroy the monster. Let us then together say no to evil and to destructive habits. Now, I'm going to read some things to you. And when I come to the end of that sentence, we all chorus no. Before I read, can we say that? No. Say it again. No. Say it once more. So the enticement of the serpent in the garden of Eden will say no to the seduction of indecent dressing on our campuses will say no to the destructive influence and impact of pornography on the campus will say no and to the salesmen and the distributors of dirty video will say no and to the salesmen and the distributors of the VCD and pornographic literature, we all say no. And to the subtle slavery of lust, we say no. To the temptation of immoral relationship that we mistakenly call fellowship or we call friendship, we say no. And to every thought, to every action, and to every lifestyle that weakens the will and weakens your mind and defiles your mind and paralyzes your intellect, we all say no. We say no to evil and we're going to overcome. The no we say here today, tomorrow we'll say that no. When that thing confronts you on the campus, when it confronts you anywhere you go, you will remember that we joined hands together and as partners in progress, we have said no. And that no will continue sounding, reverberating everywhere we go, in the day, in the night, that no we will maintain it. And as we finish this program, and you go to your faculty, and you go to different, different places you have come from, when these things come, you will remember where I am, I will remember where you are, you will remember we are continuing to say no. I come to point number two. Loss through lost. Loss through lost. Now, when you think of someone lost, I have been um, a teacher, as well as a pastor, as well as a missionary, and I've been to different, different places. And there's always something that concerns people. Uh, somebody comes and he says, uh, please uh, pray for me. My husband went out in the morning. Many months ago now, and he has not come back. We've checked up in the police station. We've checked up in the mortuary. We'll check up whether there was any accident. We've checked up everywhere. We have not found this man. He's lost. 
Sometimes a father will come to me and say, Pastor, I have a problem. What's your problem? I see, I saw you last week, and I see you now, and I see that between last week and this time, you've lost so much weight. What's the problem? My son went out of the house to school, expecting the child to come back. I've not seen this child for one week now. We don't know what is happening. And a lot of things passing on in our mind as the parents, the child lost. And when a child is lost like that, you wonder the agony, the heartache in the minds, in the hearts, in the lives of the members of the family. And when you are lost like that, you think of everything that you've got, that you've done in life. And now the fellow is lost. All the labor, all the education, all the certificate, all the dreams, all the goal, all the ambition, everything you can think about, and all the money that the parents were saying, this is for the edu education of this child, but not the child is lost. That's why it causes so much pain. Now when we say lost, a person can still be alive, physically, and yet the child is lost. Do you remember if you're a reader of the Bible, when the prodigal son came back home, the father left every other thing and he was rejoicing. And then he wanted to give the explanation to the senior brother. He said, this your junior brother was lost. He didn't die, but was lost. But now he's found. Then he said, he, is de he was dead and he's found again. He's alive again. He was alive physically, but he was dead. Vision dead dream dead hope dead vitality within dead everything you can think about that makes us to call him a man dead and when you are lost like that although you are still going to class are you still going for lectures are you still trying to take exam but I about you think about your life how is it lost Look at the children of Israel. Look at what they said. I'll explain to you. In Ezekiel chapter 37, reading from verse 11. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 11. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried. Our hope is lost. When I talk about being lost, look at this one. Loss of time. Do you know that time is passing by? And the time you lose today, you cannot recover again. And this may be the best time of your life. You are young. You are sharp. You are energetic. You can do a lot today. I remember when I was your age, the things I did at that time, the habits I developed at that time, and the dream I had at that time. And if you lose this time, that's part of being lost. Time lost, number two. You know, when you get into this immorality, and this pornography, and this daydreaming, and this fumbling, and this thing they call girlfriend, boyfriend, or just having a nice time, or just keeping a date. What do you mean keeping a date? You mean the date of your exam? Ah, old man, that's not what it means. Dating. Ah. We're just having a nice time. You know what happens? Well, that lost, number two, the loss of self-respect. Young girl, when those boys are talking, and they are, you know, you are passing and they are smiling and laughing. And uh, they are telling one another, don't point, don't let her know we're talking about her, but just do your head like this. That girl, this one, that one. Self-respect is gone. You've lost self-respect, number three. The loss of direction in life. There's confusion in your life. Because of that loss... 
and because of the kind of association you are keeping, you have lost direction in life. Number four, the loss of purpose for living. Why are we living? Why are you alive? What are you going to achieve? What is your life going to amount to? You become a zero. You become a nothing. You become a non-entity. The loss of purpose for living. Number five, the loss of peace. Because conscience is still there. And the conscience will be reminding you and telling you, look at that thing you have done. Daddy does not know. Mommy does not know. And uh, the people that count in your life, they don't know. The significant people in your life, they do not know. But your conscience follows you everywhere. The loss of peace. Number six, the loss of innocence. You're no more innocent. God will forgive you, but you're no more innocent. You might even sleep over it, but you are no more innocent. You might break off from that habit, but you are no more innocent. The loss of innocence. Number seven. The loss of beauty. The loss of beauty. The charming lady. Beautiful lady. She was beautiful before. And whatever clothes she wore, whether it was, you know, shabby or low cost or whatever, she always looked nice, smart. But now, after she started this life of lust, she has now become so ugly. Even look at her face. And she tries to build it up by using all these chemicals. And the more you use the chemical, you spoil the whole matter now. Because now, your facial appearance is looking like you're on the other side of the sea, overseas. But your leg and your hand, now look at them. They're different. Different colors. So, you spoil everything. The loss of beauty. And number eight, the loss of health. You lose your health. That's a lost person. That's a lost boy. That's a lost girl. When the health is lost. And you know, if you continue like that, eventually there is the loss of hope. It is what the people said here. They said, our bones are dried. Our hope lost. And you know, when somebody does not have hope anymore, do you know that's why young people commit suicide? What am I living for? I'm disappointed with myself. I'm disappointed with that boy. Not only that boy. I look at all boys like that boy. I'm disappointed in boys. I'm disappointed in men. Look at what that lecturer did to me. I'm disappointed in all those adults. And sometimes if it happens at home, that it was daddy that messed you up, it was cousin, uncle, senior brother that messed you up. You have no confidence in any man, anywhere, anymore. Then it means you lose everything we call hope, expectation from anybody. They've disappointed me so much, I don't have confidence in anyone. That's what you'll say. Number 10, the loss of your mind. Somebody comes to the psychiatrist and says, we're bringing somebody. He needs help urgently. She needs help urgently because he's losing his mind. She's losing her mind. Tell me, when you've lost time, you've lost self-respect, you've lost direction in life, you have lost purpose for living, you have lost your peace, you have lost innocence, you have lost beauty, you have lost health, you have lost hope, you have lost your mind, that person is lost. That's what it means to be lost. You have lost everything that matters in life. And then, you know, when you go on in this lost, L-U-S-T, immorality, pornography, all these evil things, licentious things that people, the young people in particular, old people do it too, Eventually, you lose the sense of shame. You lose the sense of shame. You know, 
when you look up here for a moment, uh, let's say, for example, you saw uh, a dog or you saw any other animal and you put clothes on that animal. That animal looks odd because the animal is all right without clothes. Am I right? Okay, come back home. Come to me. Come to you. Come to ourselves now. When we, because you see, when the animals try to be like us and they put on clothes like us, they look odd. Am I right? When we want to be like the animals and we put off all our clothes, no clothes at all, I will come to the lecture room. And the lecturer is saying, what are we up to today? And a lady just, you know, walked past by. Good morning, sir. We've lost the sense of shame. The things, the anatomy of the body, the contour, every part, that we ought to hide and we ought to keep sacred and secret and covered. We expose everything. No shame anymore. When it's like that, and we've lost even the sense of shame. That's the lost girl. That's the lost lady. And that's the lost man. And then number 12, the loss of favor. The loss of favor. When you lose favor with man and favor with God, what else remains? And now number 13, the loss of opportunity. You know, it, it comes to the point where uh, originally they'll be respecting you and uh, giving you some favors and opportunities because of your mom, because of your dad. And anywhere you go, uh, you know, they'll say, it's so-and-so's son, it's so-and-so's daughter. But eventually, this lust carries on for a long time. This immorality carries on for a long time. Until the people that used to give you favor and opportunities because of daddy and because of mommy, because of the name you bear, when you come around now, they say useless boy. They won't even look at where you are. And you're wondering, ah, don't they, doesn't he know me? And then you say, secretary, help me talk to the director that uh, so and so, the son of such and such is here. And then he sends the secretary back and say, tell the useless boy not to stay there. I don't have time for such boys like that. He's not projecting the good name of his family. Send him away. You have lost opportunity. What do you become? When you have lost favor with God, favor with man, opportunity everywhere. And even the opportunities the name of your family carries, you have lost everything. That's what it means to be lost. And then, number 14, the loss of your life, wasted life. The life is lost. And then, number 15, Jesus spoke about this, and it's the, it's the summary of the whole thing. It's the thing that brings everything together, and it is the loss of your soul. What shall it profit a man? If he gains the whole world... And it loses his own soul. Or what shall man give in exchange for his own soul? I come to tell you tonight that things may be bad, but it's not impossible to bring it back to normal. And that's why we're here tonight. Whatever has gone wrong, the Lord will put it right. Give me a good amen. You know, some of you don't know how to say amen. This is your first time of coming here. When you come to a place where I am, you will learn to say amen. I said tonight, the Lord is going to turn everything around in Jesus' name. Amen. You are doing well. Now, we've talked about number one. You remember number one? It is loose living with lost. Number two, it is lost through lost. I come to point number three. Life for the lost. Everybody, can you say that with me? Life for the lost. The Lord wants to give us life. In fact, that is the reason why Jesus Christ came. He came to give us life. And it is life for those who are lost. 
in Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Ah, that's wonderful. That is, this boy, this girl, this young man, this lady that had been lost. The Lord has not given up on you. The Lord is saying, come back to me. And I am going to refashion you, remodel you, recreate you, reform you, regenerate you. And things are going to become different. And it is going to happen tonight. Because it says the Son of Man is referring to himself, the Lord Jesus Christ. He has come. What has he come to do? He has come to seek and to save that which was lost. When he, when he gets at you eventually, what does he give? When he, he seeks for you and he finds you and he saves you, what do you have? Look at it in John chapter 20. John chapter 20. In verse 31. Let me read from verse 30. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that she may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have, tell me out aloud, ye might have life through his name. That is, you have been lost. But the Lord Jesus Christ, because of his love for you, is seeking for you, and then eventually he finds you. And when he finds you, he gives you life. I'm going to explain that in a moment. In 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. Reading from verse 11. And this is the record. That God has given unto us eternal life. And this life is in his son. This life is in the Son of God. Look at verse 12. He that has the Son has life. And he that has not the Son of God has not life. There is a line of demarcation of separation. On this side, he that has the Son, he has life. On this other side, he that has not the Son does not have life. But starting these things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. In John chapter 10, verse 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come, that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I've been studying this one. Look at this. Jesus said, I come. And as I come, and I come to you. And I come to you that you may have, tell me, life. Is that the end? But that you may have it, how? More abundantly. You know what I understand from this? And I don't have time to tell you all the references of the Bible. But I'm going to just tell you. Look at this. It gives me A, B, C, D, up to Z, life. And I've discovered something. As I came to Christ, I said, Christ, what did you say you are going to give me? He said, life. I said, what more? He said, abundant life. And I said, what else? He said, more abundant life. And I said, how much more? He said, more and more. And I said, anything remains. He said, more, more and more. 
And I said, can you tell me anything serious? He says, more, more, and more, and more, and more. And I've been studying the word of God, and I've been experiencing it. And I don't want to be selfish. What he has given me. And he said, I should tell you, if you come to him, he will give you to you. Tonight, you will have it. You have life. You have abundant life. You have more abundant life. You have more and more. You have more and more and more and more life. Amen. Follow me now, number one. He gives you the A life, the abundant life. You come to the Lord and he gives you abundant life. A life that is overflowing. You are not barely living. You are living a life that is really abundant. B, he gives you a blessed, bountiful life. That everywhere you go is just a blessed life. You turn to the right, it's a blessed life. You turn to the left, it is a blessed life. You go to an office, it's a blessed life. And then she is a complete conquering life. When you come to Christ, he gives you a complete life, a conquering life. And then he gives you D, a desirable life. That the people that see you, they will say, if I could be like Miss so-and-so. Like Mr. So-and-so. Like Lady So-and-so. Like Mrs. So-and-so. Because he gives you desirable life. E. He gives you eternal life. You come to the Lord Jesus Christ and you say, I turn away from my sin. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I hold him as my Savior and as my Lord. And he gives me eternal life. F. He gives you a full life. A fruitful life, a fulfilled life, a life without regret. You are just full, and you are fulfilled, and you are fruitful. G, it gives you a good life, a great life, a glorious life. That I thank God I met the Lord Jesus Christ. I was lost. My life was lost. Hope was lost. My health was lost. But now, he has given me a good life. A great life, a gracious life, and it gives me for age a happy life, a healthy life, a holy life. Look at me, makes me healthy. And if you're sick there tonight, the Lord will heal you. Because he gives you a healthy, happy, holy life. And then he gives me an influential life. I don't want to live a life that I, I, I don't influence anybody. That everybody else, they are influencing me with their bad habits and bad action and bad language. And I cannot influence any, any other person for good. Not me. I want to have an influential life. I about you. Influential life. A kind of life that the Lord gives you. And then you influence everybody around you for good. J is for a joyful life. Joyful life. You're always laughing. And you're always happy. And there's no problem that, that bothers you because Jesus is always with you and he gives you this joyful life. And people cannot discover, they cannot tell where the joy is coming from because it's like the source of joy is living inside you. The spring of joy is living inside you. When you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, he gives you a joyful life, case for a kingdom life. That's the kingdom of God. You come into the kingdom of God, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. You are born again, and you enter into the kingdom life. And a kingdom life is a good life. And the kingdom life is a righteous life. The kingdom life is where God is king. And where Jesus is master and Lord. Where witches and wizards and all those powers of darkness, they have no authority in the kingdom of God. And you just enter into that kingdom. You will enter tonight. I said you will enter tonight. And then for the rest of your life, you are living the kingdom life. And then L is for long life. Long life. Everybody say that with me. With long life will I satisfy him and I will show him my salvation. I see faces tonight that I thank God you will not die young. Yeah. Because you come to Jesus Christ, accident will not kill you. Yeah. Witches will not kill you. Yeah. Habalists will not kill you. Long life you will have it in Jesus' name. And you know M is a miracle life. Miracle life. 
miracle life because you know you wake up every time you worked so hard yesterday they think you'll not be able to wake up today they said you are so tired and so worn out they are not even expecting you in the class today and lo and behold as the lecture is beginning you stand up and say good morning everybody because you have miracle life and that's what you are going to have you know some of these people when we say come to christ and you will have life in christ they don't understand they say me i don't want to be religious good luck to you i want to be religious and righteous and miracle and whatever i want everything jesus can give me because i want to have the fullness of life and i want to have the miracle life and you will have it tonight in jesus name and then a new noble life, a noble life. That uh, what these uh, Nobel uh, Prize winners, why is it just them? Why not you? Why don't you win an award? You're on the way. Yeah. I said you're on the way. Yeah. Why is it is the rest of the people that were here in first class? Why them? Why not me? Why are they noble? Why not me? Why are they prospered? Why not me? Why do they excel? Why not me? Why must I be a mediocre? Why must I be at the tail end of the queue every time? Why is it everybody must always be ahead of me? I will be the head and not the tail. That is what you come to. A new life. A noble life. An obedient overcoming life. You will overcome every challenge that comes your way. Because it gives you an obedient life, an overcoming life, a profitable life. Your mother will look at you and say, my boy, I'm happy you are my child. My daughter, I'm happy you are my child. You have done something for our family. You have lifted up the name of our family. You are a profitable child. That's what Jesus gives you, a profitable life and a quiet peaceable life. No commotion. No turbulence. No storm. It's like the Lord just made the whole world for you to walk free without any conflict, without any confusion. A quiet life. Listen to this. It's a righteous life. It's a royal life. And it's a rewardable life. It's a rapturable life. A royal life. You live like a king's kid. He supplies all you need because you live a righteous life and a royal life, a satisfactory life, a sanctified life. That you are satisfied with yourself and the way you carry yourself and the way you move about, everybody knows that you are a satisfied person. Because your needs are made, Jesus is always supplying all your needs. T is a transformed, triumphant life. When you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, he gives you a transformed life and a triumphant life. Then an undefiled life. Lost is gone. Immorality is gone. Pornography is gone. And it's now an undefiled life. And untouchable life satan cannot touch your life again evil past cannot touch your life again and v it's a victorious life victorious life and it is a wonderful life a worthy life a life that is worthy of living that you will say i'm happy i'm alive in such a day like this at such a time like this to be alive and to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. A wonderful life and a worthy life. An extraordinary life. You know, there's always that extra. Others are good, but there's always that extra. Others are praiseworthy. There's always that extra. Because you have come to Christ. And no matter how good others are, how happy others are, how satisfied, contented others are, there's always that extra, the extra mile, and the extra beat in your life that people say, uh -uh, no matter how good we are, and no matter what else we have, he is always ahead of us, an extraordinary life, and a yoke-free life, no yoke no oppression, no slavery, no captivity, that the Lord just comes to you and he says, I want to do good in your life. 
and I come to give you life. And I want to give you this life more abundantly. And it's a zealous life. A life with passion. A life that actually is serving the Lord and there's fire, there's passion, there's enthusiasm, there's energy, there is zeal, a zealous life. Well, that's the kind of life the Lord wants to give you tonight. Tonight is the beginning of a great thing in your life. Tonight is the beginning of a new journey and you're going to get to a new destination in Jesus' name. Well, we'll travel together. I said we'll travel together. No tears on this journey. No sorrow in this journey. And there's no accident in this journey. There is no misfortune in this journey. If you want to journey along with me, stand up on your feet. You want to go on this journey. And you want to have this life from the Lord Jesus Christ. The life and the abundant life and the more abundant life. Why don't you just open your mouth and, and pray to the Lord. I want this kind of life. I want this kind of life. I want this kind of life. Abundant life. Blessed life. Conquering life. Desirable life. Eternal life. That's what I want. A fulfilled life. A great life. A happy life. An influential life. A joyful life. The kingdom life. Long life. Miracle walking life. The noble life. The obedient conquering life. Overcoming life. The profitable life. The quiet life. The righteous, reigning, royal life. Satisfactory life. Transformed life. Undefiled, untouchable life. Victorious life. Life worthy of living. Extraordinary life. The yoke, free life. And the zealous life. Yes, Lord, that's what I want. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said a good amen. amen. It's bad and nice. Close, close your eyes. I want to give you the privilege of starting on this wonderful journey. It's going to be great. I said it's going to be great. Amen. Just close your eyes. I want to have those people that are taking up the challenge. And you want to go on this journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. To so say, yes, I want that kind of life. I want that kind of life. I feel lost. I feel there is a vacuum. I feel there is dissatisfaction within me. But I want this new kind of life. Where are you? Raise up your hand. I need to pray with you. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much. Just keep up your hand. Anywhere you are. In the hall here. Outside here. Over there on the other campus where you are. You're listening to the sound of my voice now. And you want to go on this journey with the people of God. And with the Lord Jesus Christ. And you want him to give you life. Life more abundant. Raise up your hand wherever you are. If you're raising up your hand, come to the front here. Just take a step out there. Please come here. Open your eyes and come. Thank you very much. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. God bless you. God bless you. It's a great day. It's a great day. The Lord is calling you and is saying, let's go on this journey. The journey of life. The journey of life. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. He wants to take you on this journey. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. And all the other people, all the other locations, uh, where you are watching, where you are listening, everywhere, wherever you are, let the people be coming out now. And then let our leaders over there take over and pray with them. Jesus is there and Jesus is here. And the Lord Jesus Christ, taking you on this new journey, the journey of life, is going to bless your life. Keep on coming. God bless you. Keep on coming. Where are you? Where are you? This is the time to make an appointment with the Almighty God. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. Praise the Lord. Keep on coming. God bless you. The Lord is waiting for you here. The Lord is waiting for you here. Keep on coming. An appointment with God. A new beginning with God. New life in the Lord. Eternal life from the Lord. Keep on coming. Great day. A great decision. That you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and it turns everything around in your life. You leave all that lost behind. You leave all that evil sin behind. The fornication, the adultery, the evil sin. You leave everything behind. You say, yes, I come. I come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will give me life. Life in abundance. God bless you as you come. I want you to place your hand on your chest. We're going to pray together. You will repeat what I say. Are you ready? Say, Father in heaven, I thank you today. I've heard your word that I was lost. But Jesus has come to save me, to rescue me, to restore me. Today, I live my life of lost. I live my life of sinning. I come to the Lord Jesus. Lord, I receive you as my Savior, as my Lord. Give me life. Give me eternal life. I accept. I receive. I have life in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you very much. We know that you are a mighty God. You have invited us out of our lost condition. And you have brought us to yourself. We are praying, O oh Lord, life will be imparted into every heart and every soul. Here tonight in Jesus' name. And all over where we are hearing, I pray, Lord, life and life eternal, abundant life, will be our portion in Jesus' name. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody out there in here everywhere say, Amen. 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 Put your hands together for Jesus. Now, before you go, stay where you are. We're going to, and on all those uh, campuses, wherever you are, we're going to have some of our leaders talk to you and discuss with you so you understand the meaning and the significance of the step you have taken this day. But before that, we're going to pray for those who are sick because it gives us a happy, healthy life. Don't go away, just stay where you are. It gives us a healthy life, and it will heal you if you are sick. Give me a good amen. amen. Close your eyes and let's pray. You're sick. The Lord will touch you and the Lord will heal you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you at this time because that name will never lose its power. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will touch every person that is sick, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, everyone, and you heal them in Jesus' name. That infirmity, that sickness, whatever name it's called, I command you now. Come out of their bodies in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that your healing virtue will pass through their body. Heal them, O oh Lord. Manifest your saving health in the life, in the body of everyone right now. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. We'll uh, take the names of these uh, brethren now. And uh, they'll give us instruction as to what else will follow. God bless every one of you. Ladies and gentlemen, can you put your hands together, everybody?